is right on time. Yes! Oh, you're out in Bristol somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I decided I thought it'd be best to go somewhere I've got a bit more space and a wall if I need it. <laughs> Not near any statues, are you? <laughs> too soon? I don't know, too soon? Just there. <laughs> I think he's quite an innocent one, though, this one. Right, if you say if you see a protest coming your way, let's wrap it up quickly. Yeah, I know. We'll just we'll go and go, go on a rooftop or something. <laughs> How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good. I want a haircut, mate. Same. I just I was just saying to people before you joined in, I'm struggling now. It's like it's going nowhere but up. I can't do who, anything um, with it. Who? Yeah, Millennium Square. Someone's already <laughs> recognised his face. Um, who? Uh, who cut? Like, did your wife cut your hair or anything, or did you do it yourself? Yeah. Well, it, it's had one trip, one trim since Corona, but we just did the sides and left the top, which is now causing me a problem. Yeah. But we yeah, just my... went for it. We went for it. I said, like, what's, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. My <laughs> wife did a bit of it, and she said she'd done it years ago, but, she, like, different lengths and stuff. Yeah. Who would well, you could get rid of this shit. Head. Have you thought about straight off? No. I haven't got the right head shape for it. I've too, too much jaw. <laughs> Ah, strong jawline, mate. Vin Diesel style. Right. Take it off. David Coulthard. Right, let's talk handstands. Yeah, handstands. So, I don't really give you a brief for the session. Just some ideas. I'm open to your creative uh, ingenuity. Tell, tell the people that don't know who you are, who you are, and what you've done, and why we should be paying attention to you when it comes to handstands. <laughs> don't, pay atten don't pay attention to me. I'm, you might just, have, might just have some advice that might be helpful. Um, my, on. Name, my name is uh, Jonathan. I am a movement coach with a heavy specialist, heavy, heavy emphasis in hand balancing. So kind of been training various forms of movement, martial arts, all that kind of stuff since I was eight. And I've not really stopped. I've just kind of gone all the way through. Uh, I like to think I spent a really decent amount of time in each discipline. I wasn't one of those kids who did it for like a month and quit. My yeah. parents were quite like, if you're going to do this, you're going to do it for a few years. And I was like, okay, yeah. do you know what I mean? So, um, and I think my my mum, I remember we spoke about this on the podcast. Was it your mum who was um, in the Beavers? Or was it Jacko's mum? I think that was Jacko's. <laughs> <laughs> so my mum, my mum. Um, she was like head beaver. Yeah, she was like head beaver. So trouble. <laughs> So that made my wife laugh so much when we spoke about that. Um, so uh, my, mum <laughs> my mum trained competitive judo, but she never got to black belt. She always got to brown belt. And I always had that in the back of my head, how much she, how much she regretted not going to the last bet. I mm. mean, she competed to a high level. Like our, our, gar our um, loft upstairs was just filled with newspaper articles and trophies of her, like filled. She did really well, but she stopped before she got to black belt. So in my head, I always like I like to finish what I've started. The yeah. trouble with the trouble with handstands, when do you finish? <laughs> it's never over. Right? It's always it's more. It's never over, and like it's so inconsistent. So yeah, my name is Jonathan, and I, I teach at a circus school. I teach hand balancing and movement, and I'm kind of a student of it still, right? I'm still kind of trying to work it all out. And yeah. I coach, I teach. That's my thing. Awesome. So, well, as we kind of like talked about doing potentially today, was if people are watching who've got handstand problems, then we we can do some troubleshooting. Uh, we might run through a few kind of common common errors. Um, but the other thing I was quite keen to get a little bit of your insight on was a bit of playtime. It's been quite a little bit of a, we had some serious conversations today. Had a bit of movement, but I think there's there's a room for a bit of play. You know how we enjoy that kind of thing. So, have you got? Do we need to do a warm up? You have to do a bit of prep, or have we, have we got some depends stuff which quite depends easy much, to build it in? It depends how much room people have. Like, um, so I think there's, there's two stages of this. If you've got a wall, great. Um, if, if you're in a living room. If you can do this outside, then great. If you're scared, but you have space outside, find a wall that you can use outside. So kind of three levels, right? Beginner, intermediate, advanced. Um, I think Perfect. warming up the wrist is a good start so what shall i lead through what a normal wrist warm-up lead is? us through yeah i'm all yours okay. i want to learn something teach me something it's pretty like i think it's a lot of this wrist warm-up stuff's pretty universal right it's like wrist yeah. so i always start with uh index finger facing forward 
I like to tuck the thumb in for handstands because I find that that puts too much tension on that joint there. So I like to have the thumb in a little you bit. Do you do handstands like that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. sometimes. It's changed my game, mate. I used to like, it feels oh, really, really? It feels really weird for like a week. And then you're like, this feels really nice. Like tucked in like this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, know, play right? with that. It's taken, I used to get like a lot of pressure here. Yeah. And here. Uh, so wait, it, it depends on the skill. If it's something that like endurance, I tuck my thumbs in. If I'm doing like a one arm dynamic trick, which might be a bit new that I want a bit more scope of play, I'll pull my thumb out. Right. But I would never recommend doing endurance with your thumb out because it's, it's too much pressure really it's on sweet. that, on this bit here. And like. Pardon? I reckon strength's a bit of a bigger base of support when I'm doing like strength work. Yeah, Come out, yeah, yeah. Run that long. So if you're, if you're doing like if you're doing like handstand press ups or or planche or anything, you have to have your thumb out because your hands have to be slightly in a planche. It helps to have your hands slightly externally rotated, right? So if your yeah. thumbs tucked in, you haven't got a front support. <laughs> I haven't done a, I haven't done my shadow planche for a few weeks. I might show you that before we go. Mate, how are you feeling now? Let's just keep this organic. Uh, not warmed up. Okay, cool. <laughs> right, come on then. I'll show, I'll show you. Unwarmed Wait, up. This, this is where it looks is, like. This is, this, is, this is really great because this is a cold planche, right? Yeah. Mate. Straddle. Big, big respect. Big respect. You ready? Yeah, I'm right, ready. I'm going to give you some perspective regarding. Give him a shot. That'll do. That's great. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> mate. Uh, oh, <laughs> I, had, <laughs> I had no idea it was that good. I had no I idea. It's some more hipster, right? No, it's that was bit. so flat. Um, I remember well, you learning that. Uh, just get superly strong and then... No, but kind of I remember you. I remember you not being able to do that. That's what's crazy. A lot of people I know who yeah. can plant have always been able to plant. I don't know many people uh -huh. who I've seen not be able to do it than do it. We're trying to go from straddle to, to like full plant. She's like brutally but difficult and also really boring. I stopped doing it because I got bored. Yeah, I've got a friend who's got a um, in Bristol who has got a really nice uh, straddle plant, and uh, the full journey. He's hit it now. He can get it for like three seconds. Not completely straight. It's a bit like that. But man, it's a different ball game, isn't it? Yeah, silly. But it's, it's, it's full on like straight arm strength. Like the, 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 the pressure goes to your elbows and stuff is like hectic. What was your, so, um, what was your like prerequisite before you went to full? Were you like, I want to do five, ten seconds in straddle before you go to full? Uh, yeah, roughly, probably, probably like, it's probably, when I was training, when I was training full before, it wasn't as comfortable as it is now. So it's whether I go back to training full at some and point. Do you just do, do you just do eccentric or do you go from that same position you did then? Uh, so just that position, normally go from tuck and extend out. Have you tried handstand? Yeah, I don't, I don't think I've got the strength to slow down. So. I don't know, mate. Piece. I think you do. From straddle or from full? From full straight handstand. Oh mate, I'll go. All right, this was supposed to be about other people. Have you ever side. tried this before? Have you ever tried no. this before? Okay, well, and then what you got to lose, mate? First time. So full handstand, lower down, and try and hit yeah. it. Right, yeah. I'm not going to get ninety, but I'll go as low as I go before I can feel I can control. I reckon it'll be about forty-five degrees. Can I get a screenshot? Or is that going to mess this up? It might mess up. I'll leave it. I'm going to give a bit of angle because I'm quite close to the if raised I, bed. If I, I wanna... disappear because I've done a screenshot, I'll just come join straight back in. Okay. You ready, people? Can you see my hands? Yeah, yeah I can see everything, bro. I don't even know if that was good or not. We've lost Jonathan. Is everybody else still with me? Guys, are you still with me? I'm 
I've lost him. I've got a worm of death on him. Uh, was on me. Tried to screenshot. He's gone. Right, we'll get him back in. Uh, I don't know how where I was on that one. Felt like a reasonable effort. All right, let's try and get him back. There he is. Let's see if we can get him back in. Am I here? Right, I've got no idea how it went. Mate, it was, I, mate, I got this screenshot, like, I messed, I, pre I pressed the um, middle button before the other one, but you were like, you, that was so good. <laughs> All right, I'll have to try it, when I, I'll give it some practice. Man. It felt not bad, actually. It felt like mate, it felt like you, were, it went. you went flat. <laughs> I even had I, uh... I even rewatched it, I like, entered <laughs> back in, because there was a bit of a time delay, so I saw it twice. Oh, all right. Right, enough about me. Yeah. Let's get the people. Warm up your wrist. Warm ups. Index finger facing yeah, you see, forward. You see, what you've done to me there, mate, is you've, you've kind of like messed up my whole teaching methodology. Because you should, what do we always say? Never do things cold. Yeah. Never enough, do things right. like, you should never yeah, do a plant without warming up. And now. Yeah. And the other thing is, now you're, doing, you're, doing, you're doing it on grass as well, which is super hard. Artificial lawn. But still, it's pretty soft so it wouldn't feel so nice if you trained all day on your rest yeah right let's get the people going okay we're going to do five rotations one way and really working into like the front part just there the front flexion and then we're going to go the other direction so to everybody else follow along if you want to get some handstand action going you can join in on this one it's not just about me showing off mate i love that <laughs> okay, so internal rotation, trying to get the little finger facing each other, and we're going to go five that way. Circles. Yeah. Good, and then we'll go the other way. Okay, good. And then here we're going to go wrist facing forward, so I'm turning my hands outwards external rotation and then i'm doing really small circles here because i don't want to this quite a uh limited range what it is for me yeah and then go the other way i look like a nutter mate people don't people are just looking at me you're right you don't win the finish in public no i'm just doing for instagram yeah <laughs> <laughs> you need a sign that says I'm on IG Live. It's okay. She, she was like, <laughs> you got a bad back. <laughs> right. So um, there's two ways of this. Um, be really careful for anyone who's a total beginner doing this. Okay. So I'm going to go sideways and I'm going to do it. I'm on my knees first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lean forward and I'm just going to pick up my heels. Okay. And I'm going to do five of them. And you want to keep control the whole way. You don't want to just go clap up and down and down and then you keep it on the if, of things on the floor yeah i'm keeping the base of my fingers on the floor and then i'm just trying to extend over my fingers and then yeah. the stage to make it slightly harder is um this there's, there's the next stage where you bring your knees further away so you're elongated so you're more this position and yeah. then from here That's quite if, cool, actually yeah and then from here you can try it in a press up position Have you got that? Mate, skills. I haven't got the finger strength for that. I've never done those before. But also, I've, um, I've got super mobile fingers, which I think helps. <laughs> Although, like, Quinny hasn't got super mobile fingers, and he can do it. It's, um, there's, like, a momentum thing to it. If you go into, like, a, um, a, a shrug in, like, through protraction and kind of go with that motion, it can't, you get a yeah, bit yeah. of a lift. Do you know what I mean? Okay, so the next yeah. one is... Index finger facing forward, some sticking out, and I'm going to lean over and bring my shoulder over here, getting a bit of a nice stretch. Yeah, there we go. And then to the other side. You want to do this really slowly because I've pulled my thumb pretty bad doing this. <laughs> Let's just see what the comments are. I broke my right radius last year and have some impingement. Any recommendation? One at a time. 
you can talk. Um, nice one, Tim. Depends on how good. So we can go through these in a in a bit, maybe. Yeah, we'll go through the deck. Uh, in with and out with. Yeah, we'll talk about. It. Okay, cool. Uh, now, what we're gonna do? We're gonna do uh, two. Actually, we'll do three leg drills to get a bit of an active range going on in our kit, like a bit of uh, dynamic flexibility, uh, because that's the kind of stuff you can't want to do before you start kicking up into handstands. So yes. we're going to do, first one is called uh, ostrich walks. And if you're not flexible enough for that, it's really important that you keep extension through your spine. You try not to um, round your back too much. If you have lower back issues, don't do this. Um, and what you can do is you can fold your, yeah, there we go. Try and put one foot in front of the other, Tim, and then do it with one foot in front of the other. And then, yeah, press down. And then the other one, yeah, there we go. Nice. For anyone who... Your hand Tim, better than mine. I need, I need to work what? on the, uh, the... Your hand action was better than mine. Oh, mate, it's all about the, the contemporary circus, mate. You've got to make it look pretty. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tim, can you do it again, but fold your arms for anyone who can't touch the floor? Because you can do the same thing where you just fold right. your arms like this. And just yeah. Keep an, yeah, just keep it extended through the spine. You're aiming to bring your shoulder, your elbows down to the floor. Yeah, just bring the elbow. There we go. Yeah, so this is like, this is the first stage that anyone can start. Uh, this is an everyday drill so someone said everyday drills that are a must yeah do this um these are really nice. these are really nice to start in the morning but when you're doing it in the morning you want to make sure you do some uh kind of calf flexibility and like hamstring i'm just trying to see if i can do it i haven't really got space here i'll show you like if you're doing this in the morning like and you haven't done anything all day let's bring you over here I put my foot on the wall and I just gently hinge forwards. Now, if you keep your spine full, if you keep complete extension and try and almost go into like a, a tilt here, anterior tilt, you won't actually go very far down before you feel it. Whereas what a lot of people do is they curve their spine right, so they're doing this. But actually, yeah, yeah. fully extended. And do like really small pulses. So if you imagine like 10 is complete end range where you're like, you're going to snap and zero is doing nothing. Yeah. I never take it in the morning, anything past like six and a half. I just think that people jump too heavy. And that's going to help the people get that kick up, isn't it? To be able to split out and get the, the exactly, momentum the feet going yeah, on. Exactly, which is the next, the next drill we're going to do. So we'll just do the other side if anyone's following along to even it out. And I go, what I do and is I down for three, and then I go up, down for three, up, and I'm keeping my foot flexed. I'm pushing, extending through my knee. Up, down, Yeah, nice. Um, Tim, you got a, a yoga block with you? Uh, no, I've got a uh, I've got a parallel I can sit on. Yeah, like that that might that might do. We want to do a calf stretch for the next one. So, uh, if you imagine like the walls there, you put your foot on the raised surface. Yeah, and you would. I'll get the other shoe just so shoes don't work. You want to use something um, like a yoga block ideal for these. So I'm in extension here. And then I'm pushing through the car. And in the morning, if you see, yeah, 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 nice. Probably doesn't feel so nice on the parallel. Get a bit of a foot massage at the same time. <laughs> this is this is really like the uh, loads of loads of the time I see people saying that their hamstrings are tight and like yeah most people's hamstrings are tight definitely but yeah. also I think um, 
just as just as much people's uh, calves are super tight where it connects to the back of the knee. Um, yeah. So you want to make sure we're working on the hamstring and the calf. And I do. I don't do these every morning. I'm not going to lie, but I do do these as a regular part of my like uh, warm up for if I'm doing like flexibility session or handstands. Um, and yeah. then it's just started raining, so this is going to be fun. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to do some, something called some half kick-ups, half handstands. Now, a lot of people probably watching, uh, they might be scared to... Uh, if you say with the comments, it might be nice to watch. Oh, they've... Uh, yeah, I don't want to disable them because we're going to get, try and get some questions in from people. So I'm going to leave the comments go. If you tap on the top screen, it will shove them down a little bit so you won't get all of them. Oh, does it? Oh, great. It should do. Um, uh, so, you should be able to hear them. so this one, basically, if you're scared, um, I'll, I'll demonstrate the end result and then I'm going to scale it right back. Hands come from here. Look at that graceful. So that's, that's like a half handstand. I'm keeping one leg up and I'm keeping one leg down. If people are super scared with this drill, there's two exercises that you can do. Yes, Ladybird. What is up? Come on, get off me, mate. Come on, there we go. Okay. If you're scared, you're going to imagine the foot closest to the floor. It's like your safety net. It's your, um, it's your protection. So you just don't bring that as high. Or you can just do this. So that's a really good... Do you always get... Yeah, I like that. Do you always get people to go from straight legs? Because sometimes we'll get people into split stance. Like, but then they've got to give it quite a lot of power. So if we get them in here to kick, for that movement, I just try and get that. Yeah, yeah. This is Which like you, using that, that straight leg is like a pendulum almost. Yeah, yeah. And then the other one, if people if people feel confident with with that one and they want to try something a bit harder, there's there's two more steps. You go up and you switch yes. the legs. Okay, cool. Let's try that. Yeah, great. So now what I want you to try and do is touch your feet at 12 o'clock and then bring the legs down. So same thing. So try, and get, try and get a touch and then switch on the way down. Yeah. This is technical now. Yeah, good. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Yeah, perfect. Just yeah, like so that. <laughs> It encourages that little pause, that hang time. Yeah, which is, which is the bit people get scared of, right? So yeah, if people yeah. are learning handstands, I think it's super important that people, in, if, if people have a fear of handstands, I think they, they want to develop a confident cartwheel before they learn a handstand. And my recommendation is develop a really strong cartwheel on one side. So you, you know yeah, yeah. in your head that when you come to do a handstand, you know which way your cartwheel, cartwheel out. So if I can, can I just spend a few moments talking about that? Because I think there'll be some people. Is anyone yeah, here yeah. who's super scared of cart, uh, handstands? Just so I can break this down. Because there might not be anyone in here who's. Yeah, we often find people at workshops get like, the kick up scares of being upside down. So um, which is why. So yeah. So uh, just quickly. So um, when I, I, I cartwheel, kicking my right leg up first right so I do this motion so my right leg goes up first yeah if I was to put my hands in a handstand position that would be a that'd be a half handstand because I'm kicking up with the I'm kicking up with the same leg what you can practice is starting with your hands together in a straight line 
kick up into a cartwheel and then just move one arm, but stay in a half handstand the whole time. So you don't have to worry about this joint. Give so, us a demo. Just, Johnny, just bring your camera down a bit, mate. Just point yourself down a little bit. There you go. I'll do it this way, then I'll do it that way. Yeah. See how my legs are the same the whole... <laughs> So I'm keeping the half handstand idea of not bringing my leg. This is the bit that people find scary, not this bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they're scared of. You got so much weight going over the top. They're scared of going over. So why? What we should teach? I think everyone should take time to invest in learning how to cartwheel, and then learning how to adapt the half handstand into a cartwheel, because yeah. then, um, and then you do drills where you. You do the drills like we did earlier, where you just bring the legs together for a little bit and then come down. But then you just yeah, turn yeah. back into the... Obviously, it's really hard to go through it super quickly on here, because there's like... Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. This is... Let's go through this again. There's a couple of people... There's a few people in the comments saying they've been training for a while and struggle with a kick-up. So let's go back and just give that... Let's have a look at that, that cartwheel again. Just show people one more time. Because I think you like you say, you build that, build the confidence. Is it more helpful going this way? Uh, side on, I think. Side on. Yeah, go, go side on, yeah. Cool. So if you're scared right, of the cartwheel, if you're so scared of the cartwheel, you can cheat it and go around the side a lot. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Oh, it I doesn't go. Yeah, go on then. Yeah. yeah, I'll have a go and then we can uh, get people to see. Some of you are not quite as good at these cart The cartwheels is probably my crypt tonight. <laughs> so kick up, but then allow myself to like just helicopter one leg yeah, over. Yeah, so um, when you when you handstand, do you have a way that you always twist out? Uh, yeah, I'll always go to my right. Uh, you always go to your right, as in like uh, you move your left hand. Yeah, great. So just do that. Back. Yeah. Extend the leg yeah, up. Left. So do a cartwheel, a cartwheel takeoff. But I'm put your here. hands in a handstand position, yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. So uh, you want to kick up, kick up the other leg. You'd, you'd want to kick, kick up, up the other leg into that direction. So left leg kicks up. Hang on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? Come on, doggo. Come Trying to do a master class here. Yeah. <laughs> so left leg up. Yeah, you want to go left leg. Right? Yeah, so uh, you want to you want to kick up like left. Right. You'd either want to kick up if you're doing you're kicking up your right leg first, so you'd want to move your right arm, or you kick okay. your left leg and then you move your left leg. Coordination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do the same thing, but put, kick up with your left leg. Other leg. That one? Yeah. Are we mirrored? Is that your left leg? Yeah, we're mirrored. That's my right leg. Okay, yeah, kick up with your right leg. Sorry, that was your left leg on this camera. Yeah, good. And then move your hands into a cartwheel position as you twist out. Yeah, so start the handstand and then just move, move your... Your right arm. Yeah, just like that. Just like that. Yeah, I find it's like almost a little bit more, like thinking that I'm going to have to move in that position is almost a bit scarier than just kind of let myself go over the top. But Yeah, exactly. So anyone who's learning to twist out, you get them to do it from the wall first. So can, yeah. I, can I break that down super quick? Yeah, yeah, go for it, yeah. Um... So, uh, okay. <laughs> leg, um, 
But I'm still cool. using I'm still using the wall to take my weight, so it means that I'm not uh, I'm not just I'm not just falling. I'm resting on the yeah. wall. I'm moving my arm, and then I'm cartwheeling down. Yeah, yeah. And so let's just build this up because we've like if someone's like say someone's watching this and like, I'm having problems with my kick up. Let's just go from like in sequential order. What are the progressions that you suggest you work? Would you start there with the wall? Um, so if, they, if there's, there's two parts to it, right? There's the enter into the handstand and the safety of exiting yeah. out. So going up into a handstand first, the first thing you want to do is the half handstands, but against the wall. And then building up those drills that we spoke about earlier, but the whole thing using a wall. And then yeah. when you're confident with the half handstands, you would then start to, you wouldn't train the full handstands until you understand how to twist out the normal handstand. So yeah, um, I get people to do half handstands um, pretty soon on their own. But when they understand the concept of how to do a cartwheel, do you see what yeah. I mean? So, yeah, yeah. Is, so it has it worth touching on like a freestanding cartwheel? Pun? Do, do you teach it? Do you teach like a normal cartwheel for the beginning of like for beginners? Um, in my in my main programming, I put like a cartwheel tutorial. Yeah, like um, yeah. okay. Because I think so. My wife is a prime example. She was scared of doing a handstand. She like she can't handstand. She can kick up and hold it for a, like a second, maybe two seconds. Yeah. But her thing was she was scared of doing handstands away from the wall, but she could cartwheel. So all I had to right. do was teach her how to twist out the handstand into a cartwheel. And then, and that literally took five minutes because she knew how to cartwheel. It was like, she yeah, was like, yeah. oh, and then she can just do it now anyway if she wants. She's like, yeah, I just know how to fall out. And she's yeah. someone who isn't got background in fitness or any kind of like high level exercise. She doesn't go to the gym. She doesn't run. She just knows how to cartwheel. So I was yeah. like, oh, okay, so... You can do it two ways. If you've got someone who can spot you into twisting out, that's really helpful because they hold your legs and they, they mm. basically take your weight so there's not a sudden falling movement. Um, yeah. Or you burn against the wall. And I've had loads of sh like, you know, n none of my students I teach online can, like, I'm, I'm there to spot. I just get them to learn to cart yeah. and then learn to handstand and twist out away from the wall. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Nice. Um, and cool. then the final drill, Let's see if there's a few... the final yeah, go on, keep going. with the, the wall one is then what you would do when you build confidence is bring your legs together and then you twist into the cartwheel. That's the final stage I get people to do. Okay. So they would learn to do the half handstand twist out. And then they'd learn to bring the legs together. That's yeah. the Nice. Nice. So hopefully for, for people who are watching who are having problems with a kick up, hopefully that's helped. Um, I want you to teach us something fun, like a little something you said you had some, well, I don't know what you called it. But let's yeah. just, should we just see if there's any questions around kind of specific handstand issues now? Yeah. And then we can go into a bit of playtime afterwards. I'm um, just looking back through before uh, what, any tips what, on press the handstand on parallel bars um i guess all the, that's got a series of questions i'd want to ask with it can they press the handstand yeah. on floor have they like how long their hand how long can they hold a handstand for parallels yeah. um do you know what's funny actually some people find parallels easier to learn skills on right because you get the grip you can you've got a lot more control for me mm -hmm. Uh, parallel, like parallel bars actually caused me quite a lot of wrist pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't do it. I find this motion over my thumb pretty mm. painful. So I guess um, so. two things to clarify. If there's any injury-related questions, I've always got to say that I can't, uh, you've, physio, got to know exactly what's going on. If you've got any injuries, I can't give any advice on like really how to treat those injuries, but I would always recommend go to physio. Um, just because I yeah. saw three questions and I don't want to, especially in this conversation, yeah, yeah. Like, there's a lot of handstand related injuries that I've got like experience with, like um, golf and tennis elbow and stuff with the rotator cuff mm. and certain drills. But like on here, I wouldn't be able to go through. I wouldn't 
feel safe getting on straight up. And with press to hands, um, it really comes down to like um, how confident you are with, on your arms, how strong your handstand is, and um, what's your what's your mobility like? Can you touch your toes? Because yeah, yeah. Um, I, I teach uh, press to handstands on like a spectrum. Like there's flexibility and strength. You get people on the calisthenics end, like people on Miami Beach who can't touch their toes but can straddle press because they just plant yeah. it all up. And then you get these gymnasts, yeah, yeah. these like uh, not high level gymnasts. They're like they're strong, but they're more flexible than they are strong. But because they've got such amazing flexibility, they can press up. And the idea is that both sides can do it. You want to kind of merge into the middle of bringing the flexibility and the strength as a cool. I'll show you mine in a minute. You can give me some feedback. Just this is a good question uh, from George uh, Pettinger. I'm struggling with a bit with connecting the chain for a freestanding handstand. I can do it when the wall is there as a comfort blanket and not actually hit the wall. But when it's not there, I struggle. So I guess he's kicking up to the wall. When the wall's there, he doesn't hit it. He can kick up and hold a handstand freestanding. But then when he goes into free space, he's not got the confidence that he can then stick it because. Does that make sense? Yeah, completely. So uh, he'd want to learn the twist out drills. Perhaps uh, yeah. priority is always cartwheel. And the cartwheel doesn't want to be a move that you... I would recommend if anyone wants to learn to handstand, um, they want to be putting in 10 minutes every day, five days a week, just working on cartwheels. So it's such a familiar move that it's their default of getting out. So um, yeah. my muscle memory now is that if I'm twisting out, I'm just like, oh, I just can't wheel out. And when I was learning to handstand, because I did a lot of free running and tumbling and gymnastics, I, um, it, handstand was never scary for me because I knew how to cartwheel. Mm. Um, so cartwheel is like the foundation and then learning to twist out like the drills that I did using the wall. So feet on the yes. wall, one leg up, and then twisting out. But it doesn't always have to be like straight over. Like the one I did earlier, Like, yeah, you don't even have to go all the way over your head. You can just start by going sideways. And what what would you say to someone if they're trying to if they're going to, they've done quite a lot of work against against the wall? They're, they're confident in turning out, but they're kicking up, but they just can't find that balance point. So they they kick up in free space and just it can't stick it. Is there anything yeah. that you yeah. would advise so, for that? Um, harder floor, you're going to have more chance of catching a handstand because it relies on the reaction that your fingers connect with the floor and then you can start to go into that kind of proprioceptive kind of neuromuscular control with the hands on the floor, right? <clears throat> All those super fast fiddly corrections. If you're doing handstands on soft grass, by the time your fingers get to the end point, like the firmer surface of the grass, your legs have already started going over, so there's more of a delay in the correction to counteracting the balance, if that makes sense. So yeah. hard floor, super important. Um, there would be a reason why you're not, why you're either going over or coming down. The most common reason I see people who not who don't hold their handstand is lack of elevation through the scap. Like they're down here. And it's so, jumping. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're just like, bam, push up, yeah. like push up, like <laughs> just push up. You kick up into your handstand, lift up. Now, there's two ways of how yeah. you use your hands. Um, if you're completely new to handstands, you need to understand that your fingers play a huge part in it. And you have to save with your fingers. Um, but as you grow more experience with it, you, act like you want to put less weight in the fingers and more in the heel of the hand, like when you're standing in a straight line. So if I'm standing up, resting, I'm not leaning into my toes. I'm resting in my yeah. heel and my toes are engaging in the floor, as opposed to like, mm. me. so learning how to correct with the hands on a hard surface and lack of, like no elevation in the scapula are the main reasons I see people not, and body tension, their legs, their bodies like this. Yeah. yeah. I think that's, really, that's a great point about getting that long. Should I try and demo one and see how, yeah, get, how it looks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you going to do it with elevated or like yeah. down? Uh, I'll try and be like arch first, I depress yeah. first, and then try and push out a little bit. Like that. Yeah. Come on, dog. Play the game. Hasn't he got a nice garden? 
<laughs> so if I was like in here, it's hard to then get over. Yeah. I think that's partly because you know, like to push out, if you've got the war there, you've got the confidence that you're going to be able to, st you're not going to go like body slam WWE. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, how about yeah, look, up, up so much. Up, 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 up. There we go. Do you know what? Like, yeah, it's definitely like... Because it actually, like, is... It engages all the supportive muscles that you need to hold yourself in a handstand. It's, yeah. it's engaging everything in the scap, a bit of a pec, shoulders, um, uh, traps, everything. It's like when you elevate, you're just like your body's like i'm working and a lot of people can save their handstands by by elevating like it sometimes if i feel yeah. like i'm losing balance and i push up it brings me back into that balance point yeah yeah i know what you mean so um, right, i've got another one from claire laura w quick one yeah. uh tips for handstand walking guys 30 to 20 to 30 second handstand hold would like to start working on walking okay great um if you've got someone that can spot you, a really good drill is if someone kicks up into a handstand and their legs are like this, right? So th let's imagine these are, these are the feet, these are the calf, these are legs, like that. What you do is you get your spotter to put your arm like this, their hand like that, and then you connect, you squeeze your legs around their hands. And what they do is they hold you up and they walk back and you just, and they, they, the get spotter back. always goes to the pace of the person doing the handstand. So when the yeah, person yeah. moves the hands, then you move back a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So this is a really good one. And oh, oh someone just went over on their bike. Um, but also, um, sorry, I've got like undiagnosed ADHD. <laughs> like, <All right>. um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so also learning to do one step. Just practice on handstand walking. I think you can. I'm a bundle of contradictions, but I think you could learn to handstand walk on grass because it gets rid of the fear factor. And you're yeah, not, yeah. Really, you're not, it's not an endurance game. You're just moving. You're just yeah. walking. Um, I think you um, just learn to do the first step because is walking on our feet is essentially going off balance and catching balance. Mm -hmm. So if you can hold a 20, 20 second handstand, I assume you know how to fall out of a handstand. Yeah. So as you feel that motion of falling out of a handstand, you just move your dominant arm forwards and try and catch that position. I don't really do handstand one, but I'll try. So it's, it's that motion, and then it's going and then catching. And then as you build the confidence yeah. in it, you just make sure that the steps are more definite and like prominent. Oh, I'm backwards. <laughs> um, I think it's one of those big things, you know, I find with it is it's, 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 like, it's like the press to handstand, that elevation of strength. You need to have enough strength to push one side down to alleviate the pressure so you can move the other one. I think if you're not strong in those kind of shrug positions, it's real difficult. And if you're not strong in there, how are you going to be confident in those positions? Yeah. Then how are you going to be confident to yeah. take all the weight off one arm and catch on the other? Um, the other thing is like yeah. small steps as well. Baby steps is such a good expression. Yeah, really yeah. Cool. Like, just move the hand a little bit. Yeah. Uh, right, so last walking. question. I want to teach you something cool. Yeah. Um, how about gaze? Looking at the floor or straight back? So where do you, where should eyes um, focus point be? So a uh, famous hand balance coach called Claude Victoria, who sadly died last year, taught, like, has taught probably most of the, the best people in the world. Like, you, he was, like, um, mid-70s when he died, and you'd go and live in his house in France, and he'd train you in the morning the afternoon and this world famous gymnast nice. this world famous hand balancer when they're called Yuval don't know if you follow Yuval on hands amazing nice. hand amazing hand balancer and he was a ex international gymnast and the first feedback that um, Claude gave him was stick your head out all right gymnasts have very like neutral head but in hand balancing stick your head out like I think get um in capoeira it, okay so it depends what you want if you train capoeira you have to keep your head in because you get kicked in the face if you don't keep your head in um yeah. if you just want 
want to be able to do a handstand. It doesn't really matter that much. But I think looking at your fingers as opposed to head through is always going to be easier because you've got a point of reference that doesn't change. Yeah. When you bring your head through and there's people walking past, your subconsciously, yeah, yeah. Your, do, 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 your vision's going like this. So I think looking at uh, the floor is really helpful, which is why I don't really like performing because the lights change mm. and you see your shadow and it moves and the lights go on and off on the floor. And that <laughs> for me, just I'm not down with that. Yeah. Right, let's wrap it up then. Have you got something, a little bit of a playtime that you can teach uh, for people to have a little go at? Anything which is a little achievable skill, not too specific. Like, you know, that like handstand is like, put a lot of time in and give us a quick win. We're going to do a uh, no handed hands. No, Jake. Right, we're going to do a. Let's just sing a little handstand. <laughs> so, um, which you need to show us before you go, by the way. I want to see that before you go. I haven't, I haven't trained in three days, and this is going to be my cold one arm. I'll just do it now. Excuse me. Mate, you just maybe do a plunge. Just cold, look at that. Naughty. That was all right. <laughs> Mate, yeah. I, people were impressed with my plunge until you just did that. So you've now like completely stolen so, the show. Well done. You so are the guest. I'm jealous right. of your plunge. I can't plunge. <laughs> Mate, why don't we, why don't we, um, we should talk. We should talk business, mate. Maybe right, we need we'll to bring talk. out the punch and we'll the one-arm. Maybe we need to bring out the, plunge, the complete, like the professional guy to plunge and one-arm. What do you think? Do you want to see the plunge or the people in the <laughs> Okay, um, my plunge program was just getting really strong. <laughs> That's yeah. like all it is. And like, it's literally brute force. Is it, um, how, okay, so if you put in like, um, ratios, how much balance do you put into that? How much? Into a plunge? How much are you thinking about that? Because obviously you have to lean forward, right? Yeah, no, not a lot of balance, to be honest. It's trying to hold a strong shape. It's, it's, it's connective tension, like I'm trying to connect the shape. That's the most, that's the biggest focus. Man, that is so nuts. I can't, I remember you learning that and I was like, nah. And now he's got it. Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Rubbish. So uh, there's two, there's, there, I'm going to show you the easy version because you can do this one handed, but this no handed, okay. uh, this both ha two handed way is super achievable. It's quite similar to like a, a, crow, a one legged crow in yoga. Yeah. Uh, um, what you're going to do is you're going to balance this part of your knee, yeah. like where it bends, onto like the base of the elbow. So it's it's not like this. It's on top of each other. Yeah. I'm going to keep my chest up as opposed to letting the arm bend as well too much. Yeah. You still there? I, think I lost you for a second. Yeah, yeah, be back now. Go again. So like this. So yeah. Facing outwards, external rotation. Yeah. Front facing yeah. forward. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rest in this position. And I'm going to lean forwards, but I'm not going to drop my shoulder. So I'm keeping my shoulder yeah. high pose like this so I'm gonna yep. go this leg up down this leg up down. okay and that's like that's like the first drill just understanding how to pick up the legs I'm gonna now pinch this knee into my arm so I'm gonna push it in and you want to make sure the arm's got a nice bend. Don't keep it fully straight, but don't over bend. Here, I'm pushing in, I'm leaning, and then I'm taking that leg, my foot's still on the floor, but I'm just leaning forward a bit more. Yeah. So that's the next step, okay? And then the final step is you lean forward, you stick your head up a little bit 
them off and you try and pick up the back leg. Nice. Right, I'm gonna have a go. What's it called? Um, it's like a two-handed air baby. Air baby. Right, Nick, move. Come here, go inside. Right, so. Yeah. Good, pick up the inside leg, good. And now lean there. Yes. Yes, good. <laughs> Right. Yo. Okay, good. <laughs> how long? How long have we got? Are we done. Uh, like two minutes. Okay. Anyone, if you want to work on the one arm one, you've got to be able to hold that. I'd say for about fifteen seconds, and then the, okay. this is just one drill. I want it. Was it you or Jacko who was asking me? This was it. I yeah, think that was key on this one. Okay, so this is the best um, intro to the one arm for learning this trick for yeah. anyone. Sideways like squat. I lean over, my hands facing out. I lean, and my sup by do sideways as opposed to like this. So I'm sideways, and I just rest here, and then back. And it's the inside leg. And then what you start to do is you start to lean further forward and take the weight off the back leg a bit more. And then back. And you start okay. like, like that. But actually, surprisingly easy, the one arm one. Straight arm or bend? Slight bend. Slight bend. And I'd always recommend learning with like a jumper on because it's really hard. Skin on skin is really slidey. But try it. Try it. Okay. All right, we'll try and bring this into a crescendo. Okay. So don't have your back leg too far away either. Yeah. Like that. And just pick up the inside. Inside. Pick up the inside leg, not the back leg. Yeah, and then just, there we go. Try and take off your back, your, take off one arm. Take off the arm that doesn't need to be on the floor and bring it up a bit more and back behind you. So bring it up, bring your arm up. Yeah. Oh, also, <laughs> um, you've, got your, you've got your fingers facing forwards. Have them outwards because it's a lot easier to set in that position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to work on that one. I've got. A Do you know what? My hips cramping. Huh? <laughs> I said I'd I need to go and sort my hip flexor out. <laughs> right, one more. Um, also, one. a bit more bend in the arm because you don't want to fall through on a straight arm. Yeah. Good. There we go. There we go. That, okay, but then the last, another drill for this is um, just quickly before we go, is holding on to a wall. Yeah, uh, okay. I reckon if I get that one, yeah. And it's basically learning. So, oh, that, that movement of doing it but keeping one leg on the floor, and then that movement with the thing, I think most, uh, not most, anyone who's got like any kind of background like you guys, I think like six weeks max. Yeah. Training it twice a week. Yeah, that's like a great, that's a, that's a great photo, that one. I'm going to put a little bit of work on that one. And you can, uh, I can see my progress. Do you know what? I'm going to, I promised Jacko ages ago that I would say, I'm going to, I'm going to stay here now for a few minutes and film some stuff to send over to, to you lot for it. I'll do Amazing. It right That'd be wicked. I better wrap it up because Jacko's going to be on in five minutes. So he's, he's, he's come on to give me a compliment, but I think he's secretly trying to nudge me off to make sure that we don't run behind schedule. Oh, there he is. Okay, Jacko's like, yeah, off you go, mate. Get off. Mate, thanks so much for that. It was great to see you. Thank you Thanks, for your hands-down wisdom. I hope it was useful for everybody. 
And um, yeah, we're looking forward to like, hopefully we still need to get that, that catch up, don't we? When, uh, when we're allowed to back out of our houses, yeah. to travel a bit. It's meant to be today, we'll wasn't it? a day of fun. Handstands and cider, that's what you promised me. Yeah. We'll get on it. <laughs> right, loads of love, guys. Right, mate. Let's sign off. Take care, mate. Thanks a lot. Bye, bye, bye.